welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. That is th thank you for that. I need that tonight in ways I don't always need it because today has shaken me to my core. And I don't think I need to point out that at 54, there's not a lot of core left. <laughs> it's a nice suit. It gives me the illusion of core. Yeah, it's a nice one. Before we get into whether our president is the Siberian candidate, I would like... <laughs> I'd like to take a moment right now to remind you of something Lincoln said. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. They were his two most famous tweets. So... <laughs> with that in mind... Million followers. I'm thinking that maybe in the interest of unity, the most patriotic thing we can do right now is not pointing out the alarming behavior of our president, but instead, just shut up and take it until he's gone. <laughs> Does anybody feel like just taking it? <laughs> Me neither. So, <laughs> here's the thing. I was, I was worried. Worried there for just a second. So, Trump's in Helsinki with his buddy Vlad. And this meeting is just three days after 12 Russian military intelligence agents under direct Kremlin control were indicted for hacking the 2016 election. Now, 12 Asians sounds like a lot, but remember, they're Russian, so they were all nested inside one big agent. <laughs> Okay, now... <laughs> first, the, the two men had a private meeting with only translators in the room. And to make sure that everybody stayed out, they put this sign on the door, strong men only, no girls allowed. <laughs> and just before we get into the nitty crazy of what they said during their post-meeting press conference, let's see how people reacted to Trump's performance, because... The reviews are in. You have been watching perhaps one of the most disgraceful performances by an American president uh, at a summit in front of a Russian leader, uh, certainly that I've ever seen. We heard the worst that we could possibly hear from a U.S. president while standing alongside Vladimir Putin. You should call this the surrender summit. This was a worst case scenario uh, going into this. Disgusting. That's what made his performance disgusting. I'm sorry, it's just the only way I feel. It's not a right or left thing to me, it's just wrong. Wow. Those are the worst reviews I've seen since Titanic. <laughs> and I don't mean the movie. <laughs> One star, I drown, great band, though. <laughs> That's positive. That's kind of positive. Kind of positive. You don't hear that part. You don't hear about that part. Well, why so bad? Well, uh, he was asked about Russian meddling with our election and whether he believed all of our intelligence agencies or Putin. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others, they said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. You don't see any reason? <laughs> Do you own a mirror? Because after throwing your intelligence community under the bus just then, you then threw it in reverse and turned them into Roadburger. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. He... I know I'm telling... No, 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 boo all you want, but he's extremely strong and powerful. <laughs> He does not skip leg day, and I know, because right now, I am smooching his glutes. <laughs> Just... <laughs> like, pow, teka. Just... What is it gonna take for you to acknowledge that Putin directed his officials to help you get elected? Does he have to just come out and say it? Because he did. An appropriate did you want legal President framework Trump to win the election? Yeah. And did you direct any of your officials to help him do that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes. 
Wow. Yes, he did. That is shocking. Mostly because I'm not used to a president telling the truth. <laughs> One reporter gave Trump a chance to hold Putin's feet to the fire. Would you now, with the whole world watching, tell President Putin, would you denounce what happened in 2016, and would you warn him to never do it again? So let me just say that we have two thoughts. You have groups that are wondering why the FBI never took the server. Why haven't they taken the server? Where are those servers? I want to know, where is the server? And what is the server saying? Where is the server? We know where the server is. He's standing right next to the master. <laughs> and... I think that's... That, yeah. It's role-playing. Yeah, they have a safe word. Pumpkin patch. And the president reminded us who's really to blame for Russia attacking our country. I hold uh, both countries responsible. I think that the United States has been foolish. I think we've all been foolish. I think we're all uh, to blame. Yes, we're all to blame. Trump sounds just like FDR after Pearl Harbor. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date for which both countries are to blame. I mean, if we didn't want to be attacked, why do we have those sexy battleships in our big, juicy harbor? Yes. People don't usually play that much of it. Wow. They usually cut it off a little bit earlier oh, than that. I hadn't yeah. heard that part yeah. before. If Trump's spineless toadying to Putin made you think, what's Vlad got on him? You're not the only one. Does the Russian government have any compromising material on President Trump or his family? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just remembering funny video I saw of Mr. Trump. I don't want to say what was on video, but uh, it was pee pee tape. <laughs> next question. Next, yeah, next question. Who wants to die next? But Putin does know exactly where and when he didn't get the material he, for sure, doesn't have. I treat President Trump with utmost respect. But back then, when he was a private individual, a businessman, nobody informed me that he was in Moscow. Well, let's take St. Petersburg Economic Forum, for instance. There were over 500 American businessmen, the high-ranking, the high-level ones. I don't even remember the last names of each and every one of them. Well, do you remember, do you think that we try to collect compromising material on each and every single one of them? Yeah. Yeah, I do. When I was in Russia, and this is true, I was followed everywhere I went. And I'm a comedian, all right? I was informed by our security people in no uncertain terms that my phone was bugged and my room had cameras in it. So I showered in a blue blazer. <laughs> when I finally, when finally, I just couldn't, I had to get naked eventually. And this is true, I turned to every mirror and said, you like, Ivan? You like? <laughs> huh? You like? Huh? Pow, pow! Hey. This is called high fructose corn syrup, my friend. <laughs> America number one. And Putin had a very strange idea for Robert Mueller. We can actually permit official representatives of the United States, including the members of this very commission, um, headed by Mr. Mueller. We can let them into the country. Yes, come to Moscow, Mr. Mueller. Uh, come as our guest. We will take you out if you get my drift. We will roll out the red carpet, which is red from blood, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying we will kill you. But perhaps the weirdest moment of the whole weird fest was when Putin gave Trump a little present to commemorate the World Cup. Mr. President, I'll give this ball to you, and now the ball is in your court. It's a nice gift. It's a nice gift, although I think Putin still has a set of Trump's balls. <laughs> Trump's shocking performance in this shocking press conference shocked a shocking number of people, and we'll tell you all about them when we come back. Stick around.